Hello and welcome. My name's Catherine and this is my tutorial, Creative Felt Making. I've been felt making for over 20 years and it still today remains an activity that I love and I enjoy and I still, it challenges even after all these years. I'm challenged by the materials, all the different fibres, teaching myself new processes, new methods and using different techniques. So felt making you can cross over into embroidery and stitching, all sorts of other um, cre creative uh, textile based activities. Felt for me has a really unique quality. It's somewhere between a textile, a woven or a knitted fabric that you might use for apparel, for clothing, and paper. Obviously it's not as hard as paper, you can't write on it, but it's got that rigid um, quality to it. And if you look at the catwalk collections of Comme de Garçon, you'll know what I'm talking about. It holds its own structure. You don't need to hem felt after you cut into it. And it's got this amazing bounciness where you can stitch into the surface of it or through it. And, and there's, a, there's a quilted aspect to it too. You can embroider over felt, into felt, and get some great effects. And in fact, you can use fibres, natural fibres, wools or cottons, whatever fa natural fibres. You can use them in a felt technique with a woven or knitted fabric, and it's called Nuno. And you're producing a whole other fabric again. And of course, you can produce 3D items with felt that you can't easily do with other textile construction techniques. In fact, they're still in Kazakhstan and parts of, say, northern Russia that are still making their houses, their homes, like yurts, like tent structures, out of felt, even today, where they've not got read readily access to modern building materials. Felting is the oldest known um, form of creating a textile, and it predates the weaving, the embroidery, the knitting, all of those other textile construction techniques. Perhaps it's down to the fact that felt making as a technique is so simple. You don't need any specialist machinery or equipment. Felting occurs when you expose natural fibres to moisture and to friction. Those two really simple elements. You could take some wool fibres with your hands, add some water and it would felt. In fact, those fibres would felt just from the moisture off your hands. Anybody who has put a wool jumper in the wash on the wrong setting will know exactly what I'm talking about. You turn, you end up with something a lot smaller um, and it's got a completely different felted shrunk quality to it. For me, you could break felt making down into two distinct separate stages or halves. The first half of the process would be the designing, the arranging of the fibres um, and it's called laying down, laying down the fibres and that's a whole skill and a technique in itself and you're only halfway there once you've done that. The other half is where the actual felting takes place and this is where the water and the friction uh, comes into play. So that's how I'm going to teach my felting today. I'm going to give you lots of examples of how you could potentially lay down your fibres and then I'll do one demonstration on how to felt and you could apply that felting demonstration to however you've chosen to lay down your fibres. So for this tutorial you are going to need a bunch of materials and equipment and I'm going to run through everything you need just now. Check what you've got at home, perhaps you've got most of it there already and check what you need to go out and buy. Where possible I'm going to provide ideas for substitutions so you, you might be able to just use something at home that you've already got in the meantime. Anyone wanting a kit? These are available from my Etsy shop, so please visit there, take a look, see if you want to buy one. It'll have the majority of what you need for felting. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Felting remains, as I say, my, one of my favourite techniques that I still use today in much of my work. Let's get started. So to begin, I'd like to show you some examples of my work and it might give you some ideas of how you would like to design your own felt when we go to felt in your, your own project later on. Um, the first one actually is, it's the reverse side of an example I wanted to show you, but I quite like the simplicity of it and it's a little bit like an impressionist painting or Monet's, you know, water lilies garden, something like that. And I'm hoping you can see some of the detail. And it's it's really lots of different pinks mixed together with different silks and cottons. And so I've created, it's almost like an abstract picture by itself. And you could use this for, I mean, it'd make a great little handbag, would make a great little cushion, even just stapled onto <clears throat> um, a blank canvas. 
would look great as abstract artwork as well. So don't don't think that you you have to do something that's a picture, that something's got to have an animal in it or a sheep or a house or some sky, anything like that. It doesn't, it can just be an abstract uh, celebration of the fibres and the colours in that way. So just flipping over and showing you um, this side, I wanted to show you. Here you can see on the reverse side I've use a technique to create letters and and spell a word but you don't have you don't have to do this you could you could have just just an initial or it could just be abstract shapes i'll be showing you a technique of how how to do this how to lay the fibers down in this way maybe there's a new baby in the house and you wanted to make a piece of artwork that's got an initial on it or even some of these i hope you can see some of the detail in this um in this background some of some of the shapes kind of onion ring shapes some of the yarns some of the speckles it's really rich in texture so i'll be showing you exactly how to approach laying down fibers in this way the next example is is one that's i'm just getting used to which way the camera is the next example is one that's birds in a tree i'm hoping you can see see that so i'll be showing you how to lay down the fibers for the background how to add some of this detail some of the yarns here that i've used and, and the detailing on the birds this one's actually had a freehand machine stitch applied to it afterwards just to bring out some of the detail and this is something that you're going to find yourselves find out yourselves with felt making that everything does have a tendency to intermingle and mesh and and become quite wishy-washy and almost like it's been painted on that it's really hard to get some of the detail and some, into things and some, some of the sharp lines and sharp edges uh, so stitching can help in that way another thing you can see I've done here is I've just glued a rod to the back of it with a little hook which is a really nice way of presenting the work because you get to see all the edges which are very characteristically felt makers um, works edges another example here is more of a landscape based picture and um, so I'll be showing you how to lay down some of the fibres for the sky this has got silk and cotton all mixed in here and as I was saying just to how tricky it is to get some of the details sometimes you can see with that house I've added a free motion machine stitch afterwards and you can do it with hand stitch too but it, it gives it this gorgeous sort of quilted 3D effect so I'll be <clears throat> showing showing you how to lay fibres down more in this landscape or seascape type type way. And then finally, another example here just to show you was one from my Christmas workshop. Um, and it's kind of holly and berries and abstract and colours. Um, so I'll be showing you either something like this or perhaps something more springtime flowers based, but something more organic in this way. Again, I've put a rod and a hook in the back which allows it to be hung up and you can see some of the detail that I've added afterwards with the hand stitch um, and some little felted bobbles and nobbles and buttons and things like that which just adds interest but this looks great on your wall at Christmas and it's definitely a talking point if you put it on your dining table 